Assisi Episcopal Church here in Ottawa, Tennessee. We are blessed that each of you are here. We are blessed you are joining us virtually, whether in real time or later. Your prayers and presence make a difference in this community, and we are so grateful you are here. We begin on Palm Sunday with a palm procession, and to do the palm procession, we're going to invite those who are able to go to the North Dex. That's that room you came in through and received your booklets. We will gather in there. And so I want to tell the whole thing before you make your decision. We will gather in there. There will be part of the service in there, including the gospel. Because Josh is mic'd and all that, you will hear him read the gospel. You'll hear us if you choose to stay in there, in here. But if you go out there and want to process with us, we will go down the hall of the building, out the double doors of the parish hall, into the parking lot, and back through the front doors and return to your seats. So as we do that, Chuck will be playing on the carillon, all glory, laud, and honor. And he has brought it down a step so it's more singable. <laughs> God bless Chuck. <laughs> so I invite those of you who are able to go to the North X. If you choose to stay in here, we're going to get you your palms. Do not fear. These are the ones that are blessed. If somebody could share those with those who choose to stay seated, and then we'll, hand, we'll bless these and hand them out. It's good to see you, you. We need to get where the camera can see us, and I need someone who's a parent to go get Madeline and Keegan and Trotter because we need them to lead the procession. They're coming. They're coming? Good. And the cross, Dexter, can you get the cross for Madeline? Madeline's leading us today. Madeline, Dexter has the cross for you. All right. We begin on page two. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully. With your help, O oh Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Luke. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it. 
As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please take palms. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Madeline, you can start talking. I don't hear it. Yeah, there it goes.
We continue on page five. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he awakens, awakens my ears, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me, let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 31, which we will read in unison. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not require equity with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born into human likeness. 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. We threw you a bit of a curveball, but we read the gospel at the beginning. And it's the gospel we want to focus on 
in this time together because this service will end with the reading of the Passion Gospel. And you, after reading it, will leave as a bell tolls in silence. We need to fully enter Holy Week, but to do that, we must prepare. We may have come in with thoughts everywhere else, but on the Palm Sunday, we are entering. And we do so gladly, just as the hymn we just sang talks about. The children were leading that procession as the children led us today. Palms and cloaks thrown on the road before our Savior, our Lord. But how did we get to this moment? We know, because we've been talking about it throughout Lent, that quite a few chapters ago, Jesus set his vision, his sight, his mind, his heart on Jerusalem and he has been walking ever closer. And now he stands at that hill over Jerusalem where Bethphage and Bethany come together. And he tells his two disciples that he has appoints something strange. Go, get that colt that was never ridden. Now I'm a former horsewoman. Getting on a colt that was never ridden can be a frightening thing. But it does not give our Lord pause. And the disciples, not even sure which colt this is, follow his orders. They go in, and when they're questioned, they do exactly what he told them to do. The Lord needs it. And just that statement stops all questioning. And so they bring the colt to Jesus who rides it as people throw cloaks and palm branches before him. You see, he's bringing up the end of the procession, not leading it. It's the people who lead the procession in to Jerusalem. And the Pharisees get mad. They don't like this. They don't like all this fuss. And so they say, tell them to stop. Jesus says, well, I can do that. But even if they stop shouting their praise, the stones themselves will shout out and sing. And so we come today in a place where stones were quarried in Jerusalem, stones that our own Lord may have trod upon, are in that wall that you are focused on. And I invite you this week, this week that many do not want to enter, and yet our Lord, as he told those two disciples, says, come. Come be with me and walk this journey this week, and I will show you the way, for now he is leading us. And so I invite you this week to listen to what the stones tell us. How could Jesus have found the strength, the commitment? to make that journey into Jerusalem and follow it through. This week, Bob Dylan was in town and always the storyteller. He shared a song from his new album, Rough and Rowdy, that has these two verses. My eyes like a shooting star, it looks at nothing here or there, looks at nothing near or far. No one ever told me it's just something I knew. I've made up my mind to give myself to you. If I had the wings of a snow-white dove, I'd preach the gospel, the gospel of love, 
a love so real, a love so true. I've made up my mind to give myself to you. 2,000 years before we were ever born, Jesus made up his mind to give himself to you and to you and to you and to all of us. Just as surely as he gave up himself to the people in the crowd, to the people we'll hear in the readings ahead, in the people that would write about him and tell about him for the centuries in between. Jesus made up his mind to give himself to you. And so this day, we are invited to enter into fully what that means in our life, in our time, and in our day. One of the things we're invited is to, during this time we move through Holy Week and hear these familiar stories, look how the participant struggles mirror our own struggles. How do we find ourselves tripped up? How do we find ourselves hesitant? What gives us the ability to keep on going even when We have turned around and fled initially. What brings us back? Listen to the stones. The stones all around you. And as you listen, consider this. Be still. Roll back the stones that are over your heart. Hear the stones cry out. Hear the river sing. Imagine everything you can imagine and keep going. God is real. Love never fails. By whatever practices, enter your heart. Empty yourself of all energies, the thoughts, concerns, emotions, restlessness of mind, body, and soul. Let the dust of self settle and see what emerges. So invites contemplative outreach. Give yourself over to this week. Remove the stones that block. Listen to the stones that cry out and sing, and listen for where God's grace, God's hope is is at work. Glenn Tinder, in The Fabric of Hope, maintains that hope, in order to maintain hope, he writes, people who strive without pride to meet the responsibilities in their historical and personal situations, will encounter Christ. Hear that again. People who strive without pride to meet their responsibilities they encounter in their historical and personal situations will encounter Christ. So this week, Stay faithful, and when you stumble, whatever rock is in your way, listen to what it tells you, and if appropriate, bless it. And if not, say thank you for your opinion, but I'm going to do this. And keep moving. Keep moving with Jesus on this path. It will get dark. It will get dark incredibly hard. But Jesus shows us that as hard and as difficult as it may be, Jesus is with us on this path. And live that path out loud because Lord knows the world needs it. We need words of peace again. Just as the 
children and the people in the crowd proclaimed the same words that the angels proclaimed as they announced Jesus' birth almost 30 years before. Hear again what they said. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Those words came back to the crowd. And they are our words. For Lord knows we need peace. Lord knows we need examples of faithfulness. Lord knows we need people who will stand up for those who cannot stand for themselves. And Lord, our Lord, will give us the strength to do the journey ahead. Come, let us follow Christ in the week ahead. It will be dark. It will be painful. But the price of all of that is not as great as the glory to come. Please stand. Let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page nine. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. 
for Michael, our presiding bishop, Brian, our bishop, for Christ Church South Pittsburgh of the Diocese of East Tennessee, for Calvary Church, Oak Creek, and Trinity Winner in South Dakota, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all on our prayer lists and for those whom you would now name in your hearts or aloud. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, remembering today who's those celebrating birthdays, Ross Malone, Susan Asendorf, Allison Bramblett, John Mullins, and Keegan Powell, those celebrating anniversaries and metropolitan ministries. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, including those who died in recent storms and killed in the war in Ukraine, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. a few quick announcements. This is the beginning of a very full Holy Week. I remind you that in the days ahead, we will have several offerings. Just so you all know, from this Eucharist, we will carry Eucharist this afternoon to the bridge. And then on Monday at 930, we'll be at Creekside sharing communion. On, fr on Wednesday at 6 p.m., we'll be in here to walk Stations of the Cross. Thursday, Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m., we will do the proper Monday, Thursday liturgy with foot washing, with agape meal, with stripping of the altar. And we will set up with the reserved sacrament Chapel of Repose in the Children's Chapel, where we're inviting people to take an hour at a time to sit and watch with Jesus. We'll have things like prayer books, hymns, Noel's Bibles, uh, rosaries, other meditation helps 
as you sit in there and feel free to bring something that is meaningful for you. But come and spend an hour waiting and watching with Christ from the 9 p.m. on Thursday night to 11 a.m. on Friday. At 11 a.m. on Friday, we will walk stations of the cross outside starting down by the creek and coming up this hill to arrive here in time for the noon Good Friday liturgy. And that liturgy goes for about an hour and includes consuming the reserve sacrament that we have there. On Saturday at noon, we'll be in the Memorial Garden for our Holy Saturday service. It is a simple service, no communion, and we will sit with those who are in the garden with us. Um, many of us have beloved members who reside out there. And then bright and early on Sunday morning at 6.30, while it is still dark, we will light the new fire in the parking lot. We will come in here and listen to God's saving acts through the centuries. And we will wait for the sun to rise, resurrection to be announced, and then we will have a glorious celebration. After that service at 8 o'clock, we have a potluck breakfast sign-up sheet out in the Northex. At 10 o'clock, we will have the standard Easter Sunday service. That will be followed by an Easter egg hunt for the children. So youth, please plan on staying after this service to stuff the Easter eggs for our children. Many people have graciously donated candy. If you hadn't had a chance to get it here, it's not too late. We'll get it stuffed, and we appreciate it. Also, please note other ways you can sign up besides Chapel of Repose and breakfast next, um, next Sunday is there's a sign-up still for lilies. If you want to give a lily in honor of, in thanksgiving of, in memory of, uh, please one dedication per lily, and if you put it, uh, put those out in the narthex, we do have them already arranged to come. So there's still a few if you would like to, to get one. I invite you, as we get ready to enter communion, to listen again to this, this part of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. yourself and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the people of God.
Let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Just a word of introduction about the Passion Gospel. The readings have been assigned. In places where it says the people, we would like, obviously, for all of you to chime in with your voices. Those of you that are assigned should have a good idea of what microphone you need to be at. So there may be two or three people at the same microphone, and that's fine. You'll just alternate out. You'll notice that at the place where it says when they came to the place that is called the skull, at that point in the reading, please stand. At the end of the gospel reading, there will be a toll of the bell. Please depart in silence. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup, after supper, say, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then the apostles began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? A dispute also arose among the apostles, as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? but I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied me three times that you know me. Jesus said to his apostles, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, no not a thing. Jesus said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me, and he was counted among the lawless, <clears throat> and indeed what is written about me is being fulfilled. 
They said, He replied, It is enough. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, Remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While Jesus was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around Jesus saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, you should strike this sword. Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched the slave's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then the crowd seized Jesus and led him away. The crowd brought Jesus into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing Peter in the firelight, stared at him and said, this man also is with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing Peter said, You also are one of him. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while Peter was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on Jesus. When they came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought Jesus to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you this, Son of God? Jesus said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony? Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse Jesus. They began to accuse Jesus, saying, We found this man for our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, the king. 
Then Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priest and the crowds, I find no basis for, a, for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He serves the people. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, Pilate sent Jesus off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about Jesus and was hoping to see him perform some sign. Herod questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated Jesus with contempt and mocked him. Then Herod put an elegant robe on Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither had Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, this man has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then the elders all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! Barabbas was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city. And for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, A third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But the elders kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that Jesus should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. Pilate released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save the 
the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all Jesus' acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who through a member of the council had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Joseph took the body down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandments 